Hello, Richard. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? Yeah, great, thanks. Great. So you've got a book coming out called Fat Man Blues. Uh, Indeed, yes, yes. Uh, you tell me about the. Tell me about that. Okay. The, well, the story of Fat Man Blues is um, an English blues fan called who calls himself Hobo John goes to Mississippi, present day Mississippi, on a, uh, a blues pilgrimage, kind of like a bucket list deal. And um, he's in a bar in Clarksdale. He meets a mysterious fat man who offers him the chance to see the 19, see the blues as it was in the 1930s. So he's a bit doubtful at first, and then uh, things come to a head, and, and uh, Fat Man says, gives them, gives them a choice again, come with me and I'll, uh, I'll show you the real blues. So he's caught between a devil and a hard place. And um, so he, he, he basically he makes a deal to uh, follow Fat Man back in, back in time to the 1930s, where he gets to uh, video and record all his old blues heroes and give the recordings to Fat Man. But uh, as he goes along the way, he has lots of adventures, meets up with uh, quite a few old bluesmen, and um, but then soon discovers there's a, a price to be paid for the deal he's made. Ah. And things, things start to go south for him. So, uh, I, And that's all I can say. Give him a story away. <laughs> that's a nice synopsis there. That sounds like, um, that sounds like an adventure that uh, uh, any blues fan would like to go on, I'm sure. Uh, Absolutely. Well, it, it was based from my own, my own pilgrimage. I went to... Um, Went to Mississippi for uh, my my uh, 50th birthday a few years back, and um, I've got friends in America. And, and my friend and I were in a bar in Clarksdale, and uh, we met this um, local guy. Had a very bizarre conversation, and um, we ended up with this guy just walking up, get, getting up and walking out of the bar. And a bit later on, my friend said that scene in the bar would make a great opening to a short story. So I came home, started writing what I thought would be a short story. And uh, two years later, I got a novel out of it. So, well, that's that's amazing. Um, have you have you done um, uh, all the short stories before? I think I was yeah, reading... I've got a few up, a few up on uh, up on Amazon. Just sort of, um, I write when uh, when the fancy takes me. And uh, this this is my first serious novel. So oh, is it? I, I was I was thinking it was a short story, but it's actually sort of not a uh, novel length. It is. It is novel. Yeah. Sorry, it started off as a short story, and then. Uh, I went way way beyond that. It's, it's about um, three hundred fifty pages now. Ah, wow! So, yeah, it's a proper uh, full on book, and I'm uh, quite pleased. So, oh, that's great. Well, yeah, um, that just it sounds like a uh, like I said a uh, 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 something that most blues fans that uh, uh, would really would really like. Do you think um, non blues fans would get it, or would it be just something for uh, something for us blues blues fans? Well, that, that's something I was worried about when I, when I sort of started writing it and. I mean, in, in, initially I started, wrote it for me. It was a, just something that sort of came out of me. Um, then I put it up, up on Amazon and um, I had some very good reviews back, some very kind reviews. And a lot of people have said that um, you don't have to be a blues fan to enjoy the story. Mm. And for me, that that was um, a good sort of, um, what's the word, justification for what I did. So I was very pleased with that. So you don't, you don't have to be a blues fan. And if, in some ways, if you're not, then... Some have said they've learned quite quite a lot, and once come once they've finished it, have um, gone away to sort of research the the songs that I've, that I've referenced and, and mentioned. So, I think that that's it. There's a lot of a lot of love for blues music, and uh, yeah. it's part of the reason why I want to do uh, uh, my show. And it's the it's, it is the driving force. I do want yeah. to educate uh, people to some fast, fantastic music. Um, yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm the same, and it's. Um, it's a way of doing it without sounding like an anorak. So. <laughs> well, that's that's, it. that's that's always a worry, you know. Like when you know when it, right. you know all the uh, the uh, the vinyl uh, index numbers and things like that. That's right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and who recorded what on what record label? Did you have to that's do a lot right. of uh, uh, sort of research uh, for it? I haven't um, uh, I haven't looked at the book yet, but I'll certainly be buying it. But. Uh, did you have to do a lot of research to um, to find out sort of who, uh, who was playing when and in what sort of town and things like that? Kind of, yeah. Um, I'm I'm a blues anorak anyway, so I've got loads of um, blues history books, blues reference books. So I've, and I've read those, been reading those for years. So a lot of the anecdotes and stories are in my head anyway. Mm. Uh, so I just went back to research those, and then um, I spent the the the, the, sto- the the thrust of the story is very much dialogue driven mm. within within the book. And I spent um, hours and hours listening to old interviews, and and uh, old, some of the old blues songs had um, ad libs within the, within the 
between the verses. And I thought I spent hours listening to those. Floating verses, don't they? Yeah, sure, that's right. Like Charlie Patton especially. He's a hero. But um, I spent hours listening to those just to get the uh, the dialogue right, the nuances of the dialogue. So, mm. and um, I've got another friend in America who's um, who's from Mississippi, and he was a great help. A guy called Rand Walker is a superb writer. He was a, he was a great help with the getting the colloquialisms right and the, the stuff like that. So, so yeah. So research wise, it was a labour of love, and half the stuff was in my head anyway. Just had to go back and um, and uh, sort of renew it. But um, and then I say listening to. Um, Give me an excuse to listen to old music. So it's all good. <laughs> well, I've read I've read a lot of um, uh, biographies and uh, factual things, but um, I've not personally been to. Uh, well, it's got to be the motherland, isn't it? Really, with the with this kind of thing. With, Absolutely, think, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's always a always a dream of mine to to sort of visit Clarksdale and. Uh, uh, ground uh, is it Ground Zero Blues Club? Ground Zero Blues Club, yeah. Yeah, places like all that. that. You have to, you have to do it. It's, um, like I say it is. It is, well, it is Ground Zero Blues, you know, um, in Clarksdale. And uh, if you enjoy looking at gravestones and statues and old buildings, then it's fantastic. So. <laughs> <laughs> and visiting the crossroads and things like that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It doesn't quite work with the crossroads in Doncaster. All <laughs> oh, right. <no. laughs> Well, thank you very much for uh, for having this short interview. Uh, uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, nice to speak to you. And uh, I do recommend that everyone check out Fat Man Blues um, on Amazon. Thank uh, you very much, Tim. Thanks for your time. That's all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.